Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Great Engine Game series and our Crazy Leela series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we are actually taking a look at a Leela Knight odds game. It was played at 15 plus 10 against a 2740 rated uh, uh, chess player. Um, yeah, the, the game itself had been a little bit odd from the black side. Black had given back the piece quite early and um, just for a pawn in actual fact, and then just swapped off lots of pieces. I'm not sure whether he was simply in this case just trying to make a draw or just thought, well, look, you know, I'm a, I'm a pawn up. We're just going to exchange off pieces slowly and then just, uh, you know, try and win an easy game. Um, by the time we'd reached uh, this position, you know, Leela is a pawn down in a double rook ending, but it's pretty clear that, you know, Black isn't really going to make anything of this. Um, the breaks aren't there, c5 and f6. Um, either white puts a rook on f6 or attacks a g6 pawn. c5 is, of course, completely restricted. And, uh, well, it just looks like, you know, the game will end in a, in a draw, basically. Um, but, yeah, you know, Leela, with this programming, yeah, tries to win absolutely everything. And, uh, well, I mean, uh, I was watching this game live as it happened. And, well, I just... Couldn't quite believe my eyes <laughs> as to uh, what actually happened. So let's have a look. There's some very some very interesting variations that crop up. It's quite a long game, so at a few moments I'll sort of um, you know jump a few places, but uh, should all be understandable, I hope. And it just goes to show, really, again, you know, how difficult it is to to play odds against Leela because, uh, yeah, you know, you reach this sort of position, you say, OK, well, it's just going to be a draw. But it isn't. You end up losing it somehow, you know, which is, uh, yeah, quite worrying somehow. Um, so what did Leela do? First of all, Leela started just by putting a rook on f6, blocking everything. And, um, you know, we sort of just got a little bit of fiddling around here. And then Leela decided to bring the king over to the king's side. And something quite amazing happened. Leela just decided to give away that a pawn. And uh, I mean, that's something I've often, you know, remarked on that, uh, you know, Leela in particular treats that March of the Rooks pawn, that advanced Rooks pawn, very much as something disposable. And, um, you know, why is that? sort of possible it's possible because it doesn't affect the rest of the pawn structure you know we lose that a pawn but these pawns here are still solid and easily defendable and of course you know if black takes the pawn and then moves the rook back then white can move the rook back to the a file and you've gained some sort of entry point for your rook so yeah you know it's it's um it, it's it's something weird but i mean it means that white's two pawns down in this double rook ending but it means that white is getting quite a bit of extra play because the king comes into g5 and we're heading for g7, attacking this pawn on f7 now. So what black does, uh, black, you know, sort of sees that quite cleverly. I mean, you could try and counterattack with rook a3, but after king h6 to g7, I mean, obviously you're worried about losing that pawn and then, you know, some of these two will probably go. Your king's cut off on the back rank. It's not something you particularly want. You probably should feel that, you know, this being a rook ending, pawns are going to get exchanged and we're just going to end up with equality in the end. But I can understand you don't want to risk that. You know, you want to stay two pawns up. So black plays um, rook to, um, uh, to uh, uh, b7 here. And um, after king h6 just protects like this. Um, there was another way of uh, defending, which uh, I thought was quite nice. You could go rook a8, and after king h6, you go rook b8, so that if the, the king comes in, you can just check it away. That's quite uh, quite nice in actual fact. But um, this is actually also completely possible. So, um, you know, you can play either the rook to b7 to c7, or you can play the king e8 to e7, and you're always protected. And Leela didn't really, you know, didn't, couldn't really make much um, much progress there. So just skipping ahead a few moves, what Leela decided to do was to change the structure a little bit and put the king on f6. So what does that mean? Well, we get less pressure against f7, but we do stop the king from moving uh, e7 to e8. So it's just a slightly different structure. Black was pretty alert, though, and uh, played the move rook g8. And I wonder whether you can see the uh, the threat there. There's kind of arrows pointing to it. Yeah, I mean, we're threatening g5. H takes g5, rook g6, mate. So Leela's got to be extremely careful about that. Played the move rook g3 to meet g3 with rook g5. 
And then Leela started uh, carefully, <laughs> sort of shuffling around. And now Rook C1, threatening C4. Suddenly you realise, oh, Leela does actually have a break in this position. Um, and this is a bit of a question. Is this move C4 um, dangerous or not? Um, actually, the engines uh, think that it isn't. Um, and uh, they show a supreme <laughs> disregard. I, I would I have to confess, I saw this game of uh, Torch against Stockfish and Black plays King F8. And I, was, I do not understand anything here. What is this? King F8, what on earth is going on here? But it is actually quite subtle here. Um, what is the point? Well, if you go Rook G, C1, what do you think Black plays? I mean, it looks awful, right? King on F8 and we're just taking this pawn. Ah, yes, but black plays the move g5, and we're going to give rook g6 checkmate. So you've got to be careful about that. And if you go b5, then the engines were pretty ready to play the move g5 again. Um, what is going on there? Uh, the point is after rook g5, we play the move rook h8. These are gorgeous tactics, by the way. Um, I mean, I didn't see any of them. I really... Uh, I did not have any idea what uh, the engines were doing. I had to ask them to play uh, more games in order to uh, explain it to me. We're threatening rook h6, checkmate here. But okay, we just go rook g3, right? Um, you know, rook has to go back to g3 so that after here we can uh, keep on protecting. But um, yeah, I mean, we've got this uh, this pin now on the, uh, on the pawn. Well, the engines like the move rook b7. Because if B takes C6, Rook to B1 is going to be mating here. Because we're threatening to cut the king off with uh, Rook F1. And we're threatening actually Rook F1 check, King G5, Rook F5 check mate. So C7, Rook check, King there, Rook F5 check mate. No time for C8 queen. And uh, White can play the move Rook C, C3 and just block it like that. Seems fair enough, doesn't it? Ah, well, then we've got rook g8, and then we're going rook g6, checkmate. So c7, rook g6, checkmate. Incredible tactics there. But what it means is that, um, you know, you can actually just get away with, with all of this, really. And if rook c6, we go check, check, takes, takes, rook b5, and black's still a pawn up in the rook and pawn ending. Incredible, isn't it? It's uh, But that just means that, you know, the leeway that black, black has got is actually a lot more than you'd realize but yeah i mean you really need to know learn to see some excellent tactics in order to uh, to do that so black played the move a6 um which is fine and then leela didn't really fancy playing c4 play the move rook a1 again i you know I, you sort of think well maybe if um if uh, if uh, you know, Leela had played the move C4, would Black have found uh, some good tactics? But I, I guess simply that, you know, Black's idea here, after takes, takes, the point of putting the pawn in A6 was to play Rook B6. And that should be, um, that should be okay somehow. But after Rook A1 now, Black's got to decide how to defend the pawn. I mean, actually, multiple ways are good. The, the sort of the sexiest way of doing it was to play the move Rook A7. And after Rook A5, you've got this idea of playing King to D7. And what's the point there? Well, if king f7, we go rook a a8, king f6, g5, and we're going to catch the king, rook a f8, checkmate. Pretty cool. And um, if you go rook g a1 after the uh, a pawn, you can guess what's happening. It's g5, h takes g5, and then king e8, and we've got rook g6, checkmate, and again. So there is actually a lot more freedom for black than you would think. Um, but of course, again, you've got to see these tactics and, uh, well, you know, certainly uh, under time pressure, um, you know, even with a 10 second increment, very, very difficult to, to calculate. But Black played Rook B6 and, um, well, the game meandered on. We're actually going to move forward something like um, 30 moves and move on to uh, here. So not very much has, uh, has happened here. Uh, Leela's fiddled around. Hit the apawns a few times, done stuff, but um, yeah, didn't really, uh, didn't really bother. But now Leela decides it's time. Let's move the um, structure around again. And of course, we have seen this with uh, you know the rooks coming to the FL and the king moving back, but that was with the this rook on the seventh rank. Now this rook is on the sixth rank, and uh, that means that there's no protection uh, of the F7 pawn um, along this rank. 
and uh, Black's got to watch out because uh, tied down to the to the A pawn on the sixth rank. So it's a slightly different structure here. And um, uh, yeah, Black has got to be very very careful. Um, to start with, Black played fine, played the move King E7, so reclaiming that uh, territory. And now Rook F2 played by uh, by Leela. Um, an interesting point here is that if you go after the A pawn, the engines want to play the move King F8 in this position. Um, and um, after Rook takes A6, takes takes, they want to play the move King G7. Uh, by the way, you can't um, you can't go King F6 here because of uh, of G5 and then Rook G6 checkmate again. And um, yeah, if you go Rook A6, then takes they want to go King G7. And uh, the idea will be Rook here will look for counterplay with Rook A6 and uh, and come round basically, you know, and uh, and attack the king there. Yeah, it's kind of possible, right? But it uh, feels very very risky. But uh, again, that's the uh, you know the the value of um, of, uh, of playing against uh, Leela. You know, Leela will often uh, do some of the, of the calculation for you. Um, Leela played the move Rook F2. And black played uh, rook h8. Um, again, actually, the engines want to play king f8 here, uh, king f8, f6, g5. And again, just want to um, to give up the um, uh, the a pawn, get the king safe on g7, and then give up the a pawn if necessary. I mean, you can you can actually just uh, just hold the um, uh, the c pawn now just with uh, with rook c8, for example. So that would be all right, but um, uh, after rook f2, rook h8 was played, rook a1, rook a8, rook af1. Now another very interesting idea, Leela, um, the engines uh, sort of give the, the idea of playing f5 here, and after e takes f6, then king f7, and uh, well, you've nicely blocked any entry points along the king side there, and um, yeah, you know, uh, basically there's no way through for, uh, for white. Um, king h6, you'll always get a check. And you are actually threatening to play a5 at some stage, so White's got to take, um, got to uh, keep a little eye on that as well. And you could also look to um, to transfer a rook round to d5 and give a check on the rook anyway. So um, there's plenty of counterplay there. But Black played uh, passively with um, uh, with rook f8 here. White played uh, rook a1. Black played rook a8. White played rook f6, and then yeah, this was actually where where um, um, white made the um, black made the losing blunder here. Basically, you just need to to sort of stay as you are. And uh, the simplest thing to do here would be to go rook a7. And uh, after rook f1 to go rook e8. And then you just play rook bb7. And you just protect um, with both rooks along the uh, seventh rank and the king on e8. And uh, there's no way through for, uh, for white here. So you just uh, you know play with the rooks like that, but Black um, just decided uh, just to play the move rook f8. Pretty obvious, right? You're um, uh, you're sort of um, um, uh, defending the um, the f pawn already, anticipating. But now after king h6, suddenly, I mean it's too late now to to, to do the defense along the the seventh rank. You can't move this rook back because the a6 pawn is hanging and yeah you, you you haven't got time to move to the seventh because after rook a8 we're going king g7 so black plays king d7 and waits king g7 from white king e8 and now just rook a2 and amazingly enough black is in zugzwang here so you can't play rook b7 because i take that one and after king e i mean after you go king e7 I mean, why didn't go rook af1 here? Because it would give black the chance to go rook b7. But by waiting with rook a2, king e7, white plays rook f2. And now we're just going to win the, the f7 pawn. And after the f7 pawn goes, g6 goes, and then h5, and also e6 will go. It's total carnage. For example, rook f2, king e8, we take take. You try and get out with king a5, I go king f6. And I've just got rook g7, and I'm going to take this one, I'm going to take this one, I'm going to take all of your pawns. And um, yeah, Leela will just be uh, completely winning. And uh, yeah, in all the Stockfish Torch games that I run, White just won very, very easily. Quite incredible, really. I, I saw it happening, and, um, you know, I, I saw rook f8, and then 
um, I suddenly thought, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's not losing, is it? You know, and uh, then I was looking at King H6 and, and saying, oh, my God, oh, my God, you know, it really is losing. I can't see a way to hold it. Um, but just shows really, you know, how many winning chances there are in these positions and how difficult it is to um, to maintain um, a, um, you know, a sort of a drawing structure um, and to, you know, to react to all the winning tries that um, that Leela finds. And, um, you know, White had Black played this A6 move, you know, in response to a, a white threat of playing C4. So, you know, Black was trying to anticipate that. But it meant that the defensive structure that Black had originally against uh, you know white's pressure on the f pawn you know wasn't quite the same and black had to react would, would have needed to have reacted just a little bit better putting all the rooks on the seventh rank letting letting the white king come all the way up to the seventh even the eighth rank and uh, defend by putting the king on e8 and both rooks on the b7 on the, on the seventh rank but yeah it was just too much it was just too complicated and in the end one uh, pretty you know innocuous uh, looking mistake just the move um, uh, rook f8, you know, anticipating the defense of the f7 pawn was the losing blunder because it meant that black no longer had time for a, a full defense along the seventh rank. And uh, yeah, with the rook tied down to uh, to this pawn, there's just no time, no flexibility. You're just in total zugzwang. And after king e7, rook f2, black had to resign. Yes, yeah, nothing uh, spectacular, but, uh, you know, again, it just shows how difficult, you know, it shows why players are struggling to, uh, you know, to make decent scores against Leela at odds, because, uh, you know, you you reach this totally drawn looking position, you're two pawns up in a double rook ending, and you're still getting outplayed and, uh, and, uh, and losing on Zugzwang somehow, you know, really quite incredible there. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. It was just something a little different. I've got plenty more attacks for you to come as well. So uh, do stay tuned to that. And do uh, look um, also at um, uh, some streaming activity around the World Championships. Did a stream this morning. It's uh, up there if you want to take a look at it. And uh, also going to be doing some streaming for Lee Chess as well. So uh, do uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. But anyway, thanks very much for watching and hope to see you at the next videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.